Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. We are here with the most interesting transit video for Rahu and Ketu into the sign of Pisces and Virgo respectively from October, November of 2023 to May 2025. Depending on whether you take mean nodes or true nodes, either it's either October or November. But nonetheless, by end of October, the transit is complete and uh, Rahu Ketu would have completed uh, the sign of Aries and <coughs> Libra and would have entered Pisces and Virgo and this transit as you know like every other transit of Rahu Ketu will go on for 18 months so it is essentially around mid-May uh, end of May 2025 okay so God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. So let us see today what is in store for every ascendant. And as usual, if you are new to the channel, if you have not yet subscribed, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you want a consultation from me, you will find my website down in the description section www.exoticastrology.in. So now let's get to the ascendants. All right. So the first ascendant, as always, Aries Lagna, Aries Moon sign, Aries ascendant. What's going on for you, Rahu Ketu? Will now transit your twelfth house and the sixth house. So Rahu is in your twelfth and Ketu is in your sixth. So what is the twelfth house? We know, right? The twelfth house is actually the subconscious mind. Okay. You could say it is unconscious or subconscious, but at the end, uh, there is some consciousness in it. Okay, so the 12th house deals with uh, the things that uh, we know deep down inside, but we uh, do not acknowledge it uh, in, in at our face. Okay, and then uh, Ketu is in your sixth house. So what is the sixth house? Sixth house is your daily routine and uh, the things that we do daily. Okay. Uh, the things you have to do daily inevitably okay that is what is the sixth house in short so now what happens when rahu is in your 12th and ketu is in your sixth well uh, there could be uh, issues which uh, could come uh, when you go to some developed country okay so uh, in, in the first place you could go to a developed country okay but uh, you you may be seeing i have written n7 here what is n7 uh, N7 is actually numerology 7. So this means uh, if you have 7 in your date of birth, like uh, for example, you are born on 17th or you are born in July or in the 70s, uh, this is one possibility. Or if you are born on 16th of any month or if you add your date of birth, it comes to 7, okay, which is your destiny number okay so 25 and 16 uh, is your basic number which is the day which is also 7 or it could be the sum of uh, your date of birth which is 7 so either ways by any three means so if you have 7 in your date of birth or your basic number or your destiny number is 7 you uh, might be in a better position to go uh, to a developed country and you might go there depending on various reasons you know it depends on your mahadasha antardasha why are you going to a developed country and also you might want to take off some time to relax and uh, you might uh, want to do some ayurvedic uh, treatments you know for your health uh, it, it 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 is frequently observed if rahu transits the 12th then people get interest in ayurvedic health treatment somehow <laughs> And also 12th house is expenditure and bills which we do not in, uh, anticipate okay so therefore maybe it's a good time to have some savings on the side you know because uh, there could be some expenditure which could come up so if you have some uh, plan uh, for uh, doing financial planning it's a very good time uh, that you put some of your uh, wealth into some safe assets okay <laughs> And also 12th house is representing uh, anxiety because it can show the subconscious mind. So you need to check out why are you anxious? You know, what are the things that are making you anxious? And also uh, because Ketu is in the sixth house, there could be some restructuring which you might uh, need for your uh, daily life. Okay, so maybe there are certain uh, activities which you are doing on a daily basis, which is... Uh, 
not contributing uh, to your um, uh, to you becoming your best version so this is something you have to restructure and uh, you have to focus on your routine okay so you have to see uh, what you are doing since the morning why why are you not able to achieve your tasks and how can you achieve them so proper planning proper restructuring uh, your routine is it is imperative for you to do this and then also our uh, 12th house can show donations so it is good uh, to donate some money uh, or donate your time or donate your knowledge to any place uh, where you are comfortable <coughs> and also when uh, the uh, 12 and 6 axis is uh, activated for rahu ketu uh, it is very much seen that people are forced to rearrange their priorities okay so what do you think is important in life what do you think is good in life what do you think is not so good in life okay so these are the things which you uh, should uh, try to see and then try to balance the things uh, so in short uh, maybe you might go to a developed country or you might face some issue there and uh, try to relax try to improve your health check your regular routine and uh, maybe keep some money aside for un unwanted bills okay if i may say in that way okay so wish you all the best aries and now we can go to the next which is taurus vrishabh rashi okay lagna ascendant so for taurus uh, vrishabh uh, rahu will be in your 11th and ketu will be in your fifth okay now what is this 11 and 5 this is a very important axis in astrology because 11th house is the house of wealth and fifth house is the house of your passion okay so this could give you a chance to convert your passion into profession okay now does this mean that uh, you should leave your permanent job and like you know just go on uh, making your passion into your profession uh, well yes you could do that uh, or maybe a better solution could be if you are confused then to try and see if there is uh, such a uh, such a side hustle which you can do along with your daily job okay so maybe after coming from your job uh, when you're back home you could uh, do something for one hour if you have talents like painting or uh, singing dancing or anything or maybe you you are uh, passionate about astrology you know you might make some videos you might write some uh, articles blogs and that that might give you some income on the side okay <laughs> Uh, so essentially uh, try to uh, see how you can monetize uh, your passions uh, of course it's not necessary that you monetize it for others but it could also happen that now you are st starting to uh, pursue your hobbies and your passions and your interests in a very serious way because now uh, the fifth house is involved with the 11th house okay and of course the 11th house is the house of gains uh, network circles and uh, peoples and associations in general so uh, because uh, this transit of rahu is in your 11th house and if you are running a favorable dasha uh, of the 10th house or the 11th house itself you know mahadasha antar dasha of a planet sitting there or lording the 11th or 10th or even the sixth house then there could be astronomical gains you know you might gain from so many sources uh, which is totally unimaginable for you and because ketu is in your fifth house uh, it will it will inspire you to check what is your uh, vision actually vision in life you know what do you think uh, you should be doing in life now doing doesn't mean just from a professional standpoint but what do you believe in life you know what is value according to you fifth house is the value system so ketu will force you to rethink on your value system you know change your priorities uh, not so much at a practical level but uh, trying to restructure your mind okay fifth house is the mind basically what you love to do why do you get up in the morning that's the fifth house <coughs> and then of course 11th house is the house of money so as i already said you know there could be avenues for money which can come from different sources so be on the look around and 
the eleventh house and the fifth house also rules with dynamics. Okay, it is like uh, how things change dynamically. So if required, you might need to make a change in your profession or yeah, uh, try some new technologies. You know, jump different domains. So if you have any plans to uh, upskill yourself in another technology uh, apart from the thing that you are involved with in your profession, then this is a very good time to do that. Okay. And of course, 11th house is people. So do not leave any opportunity for networking, you know, try to network with people wherever you go uh, from a professional standpoint, you know, connect to people in LinkedIn especially and uh, of course if you have any doubts uh, k2 in the fifth can give you doubts sometimes <clears throat> then uh, you need to look to where rahu is so maybe you can find some senior or somebody experienced in your uh, network circles who can uh, actually help you clear the doubt okay and the fifth house is also uh, the house of mantras okay uh, and 11th house is the house of satsang because it's the house of people basically uh, it, it is not just satsang it is any uh, community so religious spiritual community is a satsang and that also will come under the 11th house so maybe it is also a good time for you to join some spiritual community for uh, gaining more uh, knowledge and insights and uh, educate uh, to educate yourself uh, for uh, different uh, higher aspects of life rather than just uh, your marriage or health or career okay so wish you all the best taurus now let us move on to the sign of gemini mithun rashi so for mithun rashi rahu will be in your 10th house uh, ketu will be in your fourth house and 10th house is the house where the sun gets directional strength and uh, this is one of Rahu's favorite house because uh, this is where he can uh, experience the power of the sun uh, in its fullness and entirety. So therefore, Rahu is now transiting your 10th house. So power, authority, position, post, uh, anything which helps you to be more influential in society, that is something you should focus on now. Okay, so... 10th house is also the house of uh, taking risks okay so maybe now is the time if you want to open a startup if you want to uh, do something uh, which you always wanted you know maybe this is the time you uh, make that big leap of course i am not encouraging you to leave your uh, job or uh, your business and do something totally different but yeah keep some backup on the side uh, play it safe to some extent but yeah now it's the time for you to go to the next level okay so have enough for your sustenance at least for three to six months you know in case things don't work out and then uh, you should also parallelly develop your learning you know because ketu is in the fourth there could be the requirement of uh, learning something new in your profession you know that could come actually and as you know the more you learn the more you earn okay so rahu ketu always complements each other so the power and the earning from the 10th house actually will come from more learning uh, in the fourth house and of course uh, if you uh, are in your 30s or 40s or late 50s or any age uh, or maybe even in your late 20s you know you are planning to buy a house maybe uh, this is a time to think on it uh, because uh, you might be wondering which area should you buy what should you do you know so maybe you could uh, look into real estate that is one possibility uh, and of course because it is ketu so you may have uh, some challenges in uh, finding the right house for you you know I mean, it, it may happen that you are not able to find it in the first go but maybe you can try and you, you may find something or you could also enter into real estate uh, business you know into reits and yeah like you could buy land and sell it later or residential commercial depending on your situation and your game plan in life and your desires and also uh, because ketu is in the fourth see wherever ketu comes he will give some change there okay so the fourth house is the house of skill basically okay uh, actually uh, skill is more uh, implemented in the 10th house but it is learned in the fourth house okay 
सो फोर्थ हाउस इज वेर द स्किल बिगिनस एंड टेंथ हाउस इज वेर द स्किल कलमिनेट्स फ्रुक्टिफाइज सो दिस टेन एंड फोर एक्सेस कैन इधर इंस्पायर यू और फोर्स यू फॉर सम रीजन यू नो टू डू सर्टिफिकेशन एंड लर्न यू स्किल सो now uh, if you are into it or any other you know finance or medicine or any any law you know you you might have to upgrade yourself okay so constant upgradation is the mantra for uh, gemini ascendance for these uh, 18 months because uh, the world is changing at a very fast pace and uh, you will have to upskill yourself okay and of course uh, sometimes uh, if when rahu is in the 10th you know you might you might have a very grand uh, anticipation of things which may happen or it may not happen depending on your dasha so uh, there are times where you might have to actually withdraw you know withdrawal uh, is very important withdraw, withdraw for what you know withdraw because you need to actually uh, regroup your skills regroup your mind regroup your assets regroup your thought process and uh, regroup your ideas and uh, find yourself so if if things are becoming too much they are going on the top of your head uh, over the roof then maybe it's a good time to withdraw okay so essentially for gemini mithun rashi mithun lagna uh, it's a great time for your profession depending on your mahadasha and antardasha this is the disclaimer but one thing is sure is you have to always learn okay all the best okay so now let's go to the next which is cancer ascendant kark rashi okay so for you rahu will be in your ninth and ketu will be in your third uh, and we know what the ninth house is right the ninth house is the house of masters phd post doc higher education and uh, the ninth house can also show new jobs uh, surprisingly because uh, the ninth house is actually the 12th from the 10th house you know which is the house of job so <coughs> it could happen that uh, you might go abroad to you know do some masters or um, yeah even uh, maybe for a bachelor's you know it's not just necessarily a masters but there is some higher education which is uh, involved in your life you know during this period and it is very good because the ninth house is the highest of the trines you know it is the most evolved trine so you might uh, also learn new languages you know with the ninth house uh, because the ninth house can show international languages so so if you want to do your masters uh, or phd in some other country you know then maybe it is also a good time uh, uh, for you to learn the language of that particular country you know apart from just english so so it could involve uh, it could help you in also getting a job there or just to complete your degree even if your degree or phd is in english you know and of course ninth house is uh, where you might do some consulting and uh, third house uh, so ninth house is where you get consultation from somebody and third house is where you give consultation to somebody where you train somebody okay so because rahu is in the ninth we may uh, feel that you know there is there are some areas in our life which we need guidance and we might uh, go and see guidance from somebody and uh, guide see guidance from somebody who is more senior to us more knowledgeable than us who is more experienced and because it's rahu so the guide or the consultant could be unusual you know from a different religion different community different caste uh, different uh, uh, yeah different uh, zone of influence okay so maybe you you are you are in india and you have to consult somebody who is sitting outside you know somebody maybe in the uk us or maybe the other way around uh, you are in uh, australia and you end up consulting somebody who is in sri lanka maybe you find some good ayurvedic doctor in sri lanka you know so so cross boundary consulting could be a possibility and ninth house as you know deals with the higher aspects of life and uh, with ketu being in the third house uh, ketu can sometimes give you a tendency to actually consult somebody uh, back you know uh, so ninth house can as i said can give you a tendency to consult 
from someone but k2 in the third can also tell you that hey uh, my dear sir my dear madam uh, you have learned this now and now is the time for you to actually give this knowledge to somebody else okay so uh, this is not just uh, getting knowledge it is also uh, sharing knowledge so you might be inspired to uh, share uh, your inner passions inner interests and inner desires with uh, the world you know maybe uh, something to do in social media uh, and your social media presence might improve but because this is k2 so uh, it will be done in a way which is very unusual unusual in the sense you know you might you might want to share uh, for no reason which means you you may not see uh, or you may not think uh, too much uh, from a financial perspective you know so for example if you want to make a video in youtube then you make it not because you will not think how many views will i get you know you, you are just doing it naturally because uh, this is what you want to do in life okay so focus on the higher aspects of life get more trained get more educated learn new languages uh, search for a new job if you want and if you feel uh, that uh, there are you you lack goals and you lack vision in life then maybe it's a good time to look for a career consultant or anybody who, who can help you you know and who uh, can actually train you and not just give you one time consulting okay and lastly if you get uh, some training then make sure you give it to others also okay so all the best cancer and now let us move to leo lagna simha lagna so for leo rahu is entering the eighth house of research research and research ketu will be in your second house eighth house is also inheritance it is also the in-laws you know eighth house <coughs> uh can show loans actually okay so first of all uh eighth house is research so there is no doubt that you will go deep into something which you actually believe in okay there there may be certain things which others may not like about it but uh, because because it is your desire you know you will you will want to do it in a way that uh, you still do it uh, irrespective of the fact somebody likes it or not okay so maybe you want to do some research on astrology and somebody may uh, laugh at you hey what are you doing this you know why, why are you going to some ancient things you know which doesn't work but you, you are like no i know astrology works so i am going to do research on it okay <coughs> you may also do research on astronomy you know all the planets stars galaxies these are things which also you might learn and eighth house is also represents you know deep scriptural wisdom and research so that is also something you can do you could read the vedas puranas upanishads <coughs> the bhagavad gita Srimad bhagavatam all these things you could learn okay or you might do research uh, from your side and the eighth house as you know is the house of inheritance because it is the seventh from the second which is you know uh, it's it's like saying there's a cut in the family okay uh, so it might happen that due to some reason you know you might uh, end up getting some inheritance and eighth house is also lottery and yeah sudden unexpected gains okay so that that could be the scenario and eighth house is also <coughs> in-laws and as you know you know ketu is in the second house of your family so so there could be some uh, issues which could come up in context of your family and in-laws you know there is some dynamic uh, which is coming and which you have to address you know there could be some conflicts clashes within your family and your in-laws uh, so that is something which you have to check and eighth house can show loans which you get from your family and friends okay so if you want to take some loan you can approach them but uh, be very careful because eighth house is also <coughs> something unusual you know because um, they, they may give some terms you know for interest which you may not like okay <coughs> but yeah that is uh, in a way uh, better because it's not bound by any contract you know uh, from uh, compared to a bank okay and then uh, you know eighth house is also the house where moon gets debilitated 
so due to this reason there could be some issues with your mental health and you could feel that you know oh my god it's like uh, the time is too stressful <coughs> and uh, i need to relax you know so so it is very important that you try to manage your expectations and you know what you should keep inside and what you should release okay so the eighth house is a very powerful house uh, if you use it properly if you use it for uh, gaining money uh, through some unusual sources you know not illegal not immoral but some unusual sources uh, but at the same time if you go too much into a uh, dangerous territory it may end up harming you okay so be careful uh, where you enter and if if things uh, go beyond your control then try to release yourself you know and one thing which we need to completely give up uh, during this time is to impress somebody else because uh, if you are always trying to impress others you know then maybe it's not the best thing to do and <clears throat> if you're trying to do that then you may put yourself you may buy things which you don't need to impress people that you don't know okay so uh, work on your mental health work on your self-esteem and uh, focus on your family wealth and uh, yeah the, the second house is also the house of wealth you know so <coughs> k2 transiting there uh, could give you unusual ways to you know earn more wealth and money okay so this is also a possibility but nonetheless uh, because rahu is in the eighth house so the energy of insecurity could be there okay so uh, be on the watch out uh, and uh, take steps gradually and i'm sure you will succeed okay all the best to leos so now we will go to virgo lagna kanya lagna so for you finally rahu will transit your seventh house and ketu will transit your first house which is the lagna the ascendant okay so rahu transiting seventh house marriage could be a possibility you know wedding now of course uh, this depends you know there are so many virgo lagna people one sixth of the world population which is half a billion more than that actually is virgo lagna but uh, if you if you are above 25 and you have some decent stability in your career and if you are running the mahadasha or antardasha or preferably both of a planet uh, which is in the second house seventh house eleventh house uh, indicated through nakshatra or planetary placement or lordship you know then then there could be marriage uh, otherwise not you know because you may think oh rahu is transiting my seventh house why am i not getting married because <coughs> your mahadasha antardasha is not indicating okay so uh, look at what is going on in your original birth chart and that will give you more clues because if there if your 10th house dasha is running in your birth chart then it could happen that you are uh, not getting married but you are getting into a partnership business partnership with somebody okay so that is also possible okay so therefore before you jump into a conclusion your chart has to be analyzed comprehensively and seventh house is also as you know the house of marriage so it could be that you are already in a relationship and now uh, it's time for you to get married <coughs> but at the same time uh, we should not forget that ketu is uh, going to transit you know in in the first house now <coughs> first house what is first house first house is the body sense of self uh, our knowledge our intelligence and our introspection basically that is the first house you know who do we think ourselves uh, what do we think of ourselves you know what do we value our value system the first house fifth house they they show our value system so if you get married or if you find somebody during these 18 months and then you decide that you know you have to marry that person or you want to then it is imperative that you have a reality check on yourself you know are you marrying out of desperation are you marrying because you are lonely or, or are you uh, ignoring all the red flags in that person or sometimes uh, you you meet many people and you are ignoring the green flags okay in somebody and you are 
ignoring the red flags in somebody and you are going and marrying that person who has all the red flags so <clears throat> it is imperative that you be uh, you be assertive in your communication uh, when ketu is in the first because uh, if ketu is in the first and rahu is in the seventh you might get a feeling sometimes you know that oh my whole life is uh, my spouse actually or my marriage you know which is which is not necessarily bad but can turn out to be very uh, ugly uh, very ghastly if your spouse uh, is having narcissistic traits or is not a good person okay so therefore uh, know where you should compromise uh, do not uh, give up your self respect and uh, do not try to pretend to be someone else because ketu is in the first house so <clears throat> and this is not just with your marriage you know with with your husband or wife it could be with anybody you know because seventh house shows anyone and everyone with whom you interact okay so there could be mergers acquisitions you know uh, and the first house is also intelligence so you need to actually uh, strengthen your intelligence you know read the shastras you know, the bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam ramayan the mahabharat and the more you do this the more you will actually become sharp and you will know what to do in life and uh, how much to compromise how much to adjust and uh, how much to do for others okay because rahu in the 7th can make you very much obsessed with the other person you know you might try to be very controlling you might be very possessive you might try to uh, lord over that person you know which is again not the best thing to do in a relationship so <clears throat> uh, be realistic be honest about yourself but also uh, look at other people okay and try to see how you can strike a balance okay all the best virgo kanya now we go to libra lagna tula lagna okay so for libra tula lagna rahu is going to transit your 6th house and ketu will be transiting your 12th house so what is the 6th house the 6th house is the house of job so facebook apple amazon <laughs> netflix and google yeah these are some examples you know you might be uh, moving towards your dream job uh, that is that that is a possibility and then uh, you could also focus on your health okay because the 6th house is the house of diseases and the 12th house is the house of expenses okay so there could be some expenses which could come up in context of health so you need to be a bit more mindful about your health and then 6th house is your discipline your daily uh, work that you do so uh, it is important that you uh, strongly and imperatively and assertively you check your daily life your discipline and try to do some exercises and because ketu is transiting your 12th you know you might also get a job in the foreign lands because ketu in 12th can give you uh, experiences uh, outside of your country you know even rahu can but uh, yeah uh, for ketu the probability is more and it could also happen that you go abroad and you meet a spiritual community there and you become more spiritual you know from that experience you know outside of your country and another thing that you should be uh, careful uh, for libra is you know legal issues you know like court cases uh, legal battles and all this could come up sometimes now of course it doesn't mean that you may be responsible uh, directly but yeah you you might uh, get some summons from some court you know or you might be going as a witness somewhere you know or maybe you might just uh, get talk to a lawyer sometimes you know because of some issues you know so <clears throat> uh, and uh, nonetheless even if you do not face these issues uh, it is very important uh, that you understand that you should uh, maintain all the legal compliances you know especially when rahu is in the 6th you know it is uh, very important that you get to know the facts and you have proof for everything okay so uh, if you are concerned about somebody uh, that you know somebody is doing something uh, against you or uh, they are hatching some conspiracy against you then now uh, it is imperative that you have all the proofs and uh, you know for example in your profession 
uh, it is uh, it is very important for you to uh, get everything in writing from your manager or colleague you know so do not trust uh, words you know word of mouth is maybe uh, not the best thing to uh, rely on during this time okay so if your manager or your colleague says something uh, please request them uh, to give it in writing and uh, yeah even if you join get a new job and you <clears throat> have a talk with your hr you know in regards to your salary and then they say that you know we will improve your salary in six months you know <clears throat> so it should be a part of the contract you know written uh, agreement should be there you know it should not just be something which somebody says out of goodwill and of course ketu in 12th house uh, can make you very spiritual at times you know it can actually uh, help you to find the higher truths of life you know um, and also because rahu is in the 6th uh, it can sometimes give you burnout so uh, if you feel that you know uh, it's becoming too much for you to handle then maybe you should take off some time uh, to go to some spiritual communities and give some donations and yeah learn more about higher truths athato brahma jigyasa and do some spiritual practices mantras do yoga take help of ayurveda or naturopathy and improve your overall life you know so holistic development is the mantra for uh, libra ascendance uh, it's very important that you know where to focus on okay because with rahu in the sixth you may be tempted to do 10 things at a time but it is important for you to prioritize and understand that uh, you can only grow maybe in two or three areas in your life you know you cannot become like a super cricketer a super actor a super businessman simultaneously okay so all the best uh, libra tula rashi now we go to scorpio lagna vrishchik lagna so for you rahu will be in your fifth house and ketu will be in your 11th house and we all know what is the fifth house right it's the house of children childbirth babies <clears throat> fifth house is also hobbies okay so fifth house can also show your thought process as i said in another ascendant you know the lagna and the fifth house shows who you believe yourself uh, what what who do you think you are what do you think of yourself you know so that's the fifth house <coughs> and the 11th house as you know is the house of you know networks uh, but because this is k2 so there could be changes in your network okay so so for scorpio ascendants uh, it could happen that you are going somewhere and you are meeting a totally different group of people you know and they are totally different you know it's in a different country their different language different religion different community different uh, food different clothing different architecture different culture you know everything is different okay uh, but nonetheless uh, it is it is good because uh, you will learn more uh, you will experience more and you will also earn more because the 11th house is also the house of gains as you know right so uh, coming back to the 5th house if you are married and uh, if uh, you feel now is the right time uh, to have kids then well uh, you could go for baby planning and also if you already have children and you do not uh, wish to have more then maybe this is the best time to involve yourself with your children okay uh, it's the best time to learn new hobbies uh, for yourself and also try to see what hobbies uh, your children are interested in okay trying to see how you both can <coughs> be a mix of uh, you know two two people like doing things together okay two or three or four and of course fifth house is also uh, active learning which means you know ap applied learning you know so maybe you might want to do some course you know for applied learning you know applied computer science applied biotechnology applied physics you know or uh, anything which has to do with uh, practical Uh, reasoning and uh, logic okay 
and of, of course 11th house also shows your earning and there could be different avenues which come uh, which are very unusual uh, which are not expected you know with which you can actually uh, grow and uh, get more wealth no, and uh, this can actually have a very strong impact in your purpose in life because Rahu is in your fifth and Ketu is in your eleventh. You know, so <coughs> the fifth house shows your purpose in life. So Rahu might make you obsessed about thinking. You know, why are you doing certain things in life? You know, what is the ultimate aim or objective that you want to achieve in life? Okay what is that which uh, you very strongly believe in so if there is something which you strongly believe in then maybe it's the best time for you to go and uh, implement it you no know? and of course uh, this should not be illegal or immoral uh, uh, you have to understand that uh, having a purpose is good but it should not uh, hamper other people and it should not uh, take away somebody else's freedom okay so therefore you will soon uh, realize eventually you know live and let live this is a very important philosophy at, at least for humans <coughs> where you do uh, things which you appreciate which you believe in and uh, at the same time you understand that everybody will not be the way i want you know because ketu in the 11th can give you this feeling that sometimes you know your friend circle is not uh agreeing to what you say you know but uh, that is good in a way that it will uh, force you to understand how the world works you know you always do not get your way out from everything in life right <coughs> so essentially uh children uh hobbies uh your talents and gains changes in your network introspection learning and increasing your earning this should be your focus okay all the best scorpio now we will go to sagittarius Thanurashi. so for sagittarius rahu will enter your fourth house mm -hmm, nice mansion there <laughs> what a beautiful mansion right <clears throat> and ketu will be in your 10th house so now what is the fourth house fourth house is the prime house of real estate land uh, and any kind of luxuries that <coughs> we have in life right so fourth house rahu can give you tendencies to indulge in luxuries like crazy crazy hell luxuries okay <coughs> so which is again not bad but it can make you uh, intoxicated with luxuries and uh, doing show off and you know trying to pretend that you are like a superstar or you are the most rich richest person <coughs> in this planet so that is something which you should take care okay so there's nothing wrong in <coughs> indulging in luxuries unless uh, it it is not uh, harming your mental health unless it is not <coughs> making you more anxious more depressed you know unless you are not comparing uh, with somebody you know and uh, one thing which you should avoid is you know taking loans to buy luxury items okay there, there could be a temptation to show off you know the new iphone is here yes i will get it you know? not the best thing to do so this will apply for new car new home or any kind of luxuries and <coughs> as you know the fourth house is the house of comfort and fourth house is the house of the mother so when rahu enters the fourth house what happens is you are more focused on the things rather than people so you now fourth house represents luxuries and your mother also so maybe you know uh, you could be in a situation where you are having a difficulty in uh, continuing your relationship with the mother but you know you are focused too much on uh, outer achievements so if this happens you should uh, try and see you know if maybe you are working too hard and not uh, focusing on your mother or motherly figures motherly personalities you know that could happen <coughs> and rahu in the fourth could also give you learning you know like a very good learning from a foreign teacher you know different religion community language uh, which you in turn use in your profession so when rahu is in the fourth and ketu is in the tenth 
uh, you might be in a situation where you feel that yes uh, i i am doing good where i am in my profession but i need to go to the next level and there is something which i am uh, seriously missing out okay so therefore if you feel that way then you need to understand that uh, you might be lacking in some skills okay so upgrade yourself and uh, educate yourself okay that is the best uh, investment that you can do which is you know investing in yourself so once you do that then your career will also progress and because ketu is in your 10th uh, there could be some elements of professional uh, there could be a professional surprise you know which means you may get a surprise promotion or uh, yeah uh, you know you may leave your job you may open a st startup or something like that okay <clears throat> and if rahu ketu are involved with the fourth house uh, you will always see that you are learning some new technology okay so it could be ai and blockchain or anything like that <clears throat> and also uh, because uh, the aspect of learning is involved as i said uh, you could learn from a foreign source and you could also go abroad to uh, implement that you know so maybe you might get an on-site opportunity where you go and uh put your skills to test okay so essentially uh learn then earn and um, focus on uh, your luxuries and your comfort and at times if you feel you are giving too much uh, emphasis to things you know maybe uh, you need to realize that you know things will not make make me happy beyond a certain extent so then uh, try to reconnect with your mother uh, and then try to see you know unless things are very bad you know try to see if you can improve your relationship and uh, you will also find comfort there okay so all the best sagittarius Tanurashi. now we are here with capricorn makar lagna makar rashi capricorn very interesting rahu is in the third house <coughs> Ketu is in your ninth house. So what is the third house? You know, third house is uh, Upachya house. What is a Upachya house? It is a house which gets better with time. Okay. <coughs> and it is one of Rahu's favorite houses because third house is where you take a stand for something in life. Third house is where you might uh, take a resolution in life. Okay. So... Um, third house is the house of courage okay so therefore if you feel that uh, there are certain things in life where you need to take a stand where you need to be more assertive and more courageous then this is the best time okay and a uh, third house is also the house of social media you know like <clears throat> putting your ideas uh, for to the world instagram youtube linkedin so yeah if you want to make long form content then maybe youtube uh, short form instagram and if you are in good at writing you know then maybe quora or linkedin is the best place for you <coughs> and also you need to learn uh, you need to understand that ketu is in the ninth house which is the house of spirituality uh, guru and you know all uh, anybody who has to do anything with consulting <coughs> So third house is where you give a consultation and ninth house is where you seek consultation from somebody who is more experienced and knowledgeable than you. So because this is in the 3-9 axis, so there could be both the scenarios where you are consulting. Uh, but because Rahu is in the third, so primarily you will be consulting others. <clears throat> but at times because ketu is in the ninth you may feel that you have become hollow and you are empty you know there's nothing more uh, to give to anybody <clears throat> so if that is the case then you might have to go and yourself consult some senior okay so uh, do not shy away from uh, asking guidance or help from somebody who is more experienced than you <clears throat> and then um, third house as you know is the house of efforts you know so maybe uh, you might have to put more effort than uh, you expect you know and of course uh, it will depend on your mahadasha and antardasha you know so if in your mahadasha antardasha you are running dashas of planets connected to the sixth house eighth house twelfth house 
then the difficulty may be more but if you are running dashas of planets which are connected to the 10th or 11th uh, then maybe the difficulties are less and the results are more <coughs> and ketu transiting the ninth house is maybe the best 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 of the best times to approach a guru a spiritual master uh, and discover yourself as lord krishna says in the bhagavad gita na tad vidhi pranipate na pari prashne na sevaya upadekchanti te gyanam gyanina tattva darshina lord krishna explicitly mentions this that you should approach a bona fide spiritual master you know render some service and enquire from them submissively so <coughs> Uh, now it is very important for us to understand that we do not know all the answers there are certain things which chat gpt and google cannot answer even we after doing bachelor's master's phd after being employed or after having our own company we still can't do that okay <coughs> so if there are uh, there are things which you feel uh, that you do not know then uh, please help uh, please try to approach a guru who can actually help you know or some astrologer some shiksha guru diksha guru and by that you will actually uh, try to discover yourself and by that you will also know where to put your efforts okay because rahu in the third house can give you challenges in prioritizing things where you uh, feel something is important uh, today and tomorrow you feel no this is not important something else is important <coughs> so therefore uh, if rahu is in the third uh, prioritizing your life is a very big challenge okay uh, but yeah if you take the right guidance from uh, people who are more experienced because ketu is in the ninth then uh, you will be able to navigate through rahu's crazy energy in the third house and you will be able to prioritize things well okay so give others give to others learn from others and elevate yourself spiritually this is what you should do okay so all the best capricorn oops now we move to aquarius kumbha so for you <coughs> rahu is entering your second house and ketu is entering your eighth house so second house is the family you know it is not just uh, your spouse it is including your spouse your children your parents <coughs> your relatives and your in-laws everybody is actually the second house okay but of course the eighth house specifically represents in-laws so the second house is also the house of net worth okay it's like combination of all the money that you uh, money and all the assets uh, minus your liabilities your loans <coughs> so when rahu transits the 7th house it's the best time to increase your net worth you know to <coughs> try to see how your assets are organized how how your money is actually split okay <coughs> so when rahu transits the second you know the best thing to do is to approach a financial planner who can actually help you uh, to allocate your money into uh, reasonably good assets you know like like gold or you know uh, you could also go to cryptocurrency then you know stocks then real estate you know then metals and all this you know silver of course gold silver that's metal only <coughs> so when rahu is in your second your focus should be not only uh, to gain money from active income which is you know like job or business which is like you are giving something and somebody is paying you back <coughs> but also your money should be on uh, passive uh, your focus should be on passive income which is you know from the stocks real estate uh, you know rental income and all this you know where you are not doing much <coughs> but you are still uh, getting the money okay <coughs> so therefore uh, please please make a note on your capital gains and uh, because the eighth house is involved so you could also do good in uh, you know stock market investing or maybe even trading you know but uh, the eighth house is a dangerous house so you have to make sure that you are not investing like 
<clears throat> half of your entire money you know into trading and all this uh, that could go to gambling and you might lose all the money so be careful with trading and uh, for investing also you need to be careful but so that is why i said you know best thing to do is to approach a financial planner <clears throat> and see how what is your net worth how can you increase it and of course eighth house uh, can show anxiety at times you know so you might have to do a high intensity interval training h double it and uh, you might have to do some anaerobic exercises you know intense exercises which will calm down your anxiety your anger frustration depression passion aggression <coughs> regression <laughs> <clears throat> and the second house also represents your teeth you know so there could be some issues uh, with you where you might visit need to visit the dentist you know <laughs> because the eighth house can also show some health issues <clears throat> and the eighth house also shows research and knowledge so therefore with k2 being in the eighth uh, it is the best time for you to get into research uh, related to you know finance or spirituality you know relationships whatever whichever area you are uh, lacking in life you know lacking in the sense not just uh, quantity wise but if you lack quality you know suppose you are married but your married life is not that great so you need to learn from uh, somebody who is experienced you know <clears throat> so go go deep into things uh, but understand that you will not understand everything that is not possible so that's one problem with ketu in the eighth you know you want to understand everything which is not very practical <clears throat> so go deep down inside uh, and try to see what you can learn but at the same time understand that our capacity is limited and we will get into anxiety if we do this okay <clears throat> and because the 2 8 axis is getting activated there could also be issues related to inheritance so again that's uh, going to be like another part of your net worth you know so it's like the same equation again okay so aquarius focus on your family net worth you know assets um, stock market and go deep into things but understand that everything is not for everybody okay all the best now let's go to the last the pisces lagna mean rashi where is rahu rahu is in your first house ketu is in your seventh house right <coughs> what is the first house first house is the self identity it's the self esteem it's self care basically first house is what you look like what you think like what you behave like what you appear like you know who you think of yourself what do you think you are who do you think you are that is the first house right <clears throat> now it is the house of appearance also as i said and uh, ketu in the 7th it can show uh, something to do with relationships and first house is also your confidence right <clears throat> so first house is also a trine so it can also show enlightenment not necessarily spiritual uh, but yeah some uh, you, there, there is some area where you are getting enlightened so rahu ketu in the 17 axis uh, this is the best photo that i could find you know this uh, this lady is uh, sitting and meditating and she is focusing on what she will read what she will hear what she will eat what exercise she will do what she will drink what time will she sleep how how will she eat popcorn maybe <laughs> so for you the guru mantra the most important thing is to understand that you will be very much focused on yourself now is it good or bad well uh, it could go both ways because when ketu is in the 7th you know you might sometimes feel that other people have disappointed you very badly or uh, you are not meant for staying with others you know you you are better off staying single you no know, or you you are better off staying alone sometimes you know <coughs> uh or it could happen that you are doing good you are uh, happily married or you are in a great relationship but at the same time you feel that sometimes by focusing too much on others you have kind of lost yourself okay you have lost your uniqueness your identity your individuality 
<coughs> and because of that you may feel that you are not able to contribute to others okay so self care is very important so please focus on uh, developing yourself you know trying to see what uh, input you are giving to your senses you know like as i have shown in this photo you know like what you are reading what you are listening what you are exercising what you are drinking when you are getting up when you are sleeping <coughs> what kind of recreation are you doing you know and by that you will become more confident and you will be able to give yourself to others also <coughs> and because ketu is in your seventh house so <coughs> uh you could see uh, marriage as a very spiritual thing now so if you are pisces lagna and um, if you are married then maybe it's a very good time to go to a holy place you know a, a holy pilgrimage with your spouse somewhere and like try to understand the deeper truths of life try to understand who you are why do i say this because rahu is in your first house you know it is also the self identity which the scripture say you know that you are not this body <coughs> you are spirit soul so that is very important for us to understand that will also give us a healthy self esteem you know and by that you know people who are our partners they will also be able to feel more confident in uh, in our proximity you know they will feel that this person has a lot to contribute to my life you know so i should stay with this person and not leave this person <coughs> so essentially uh, you have to understand that people may disappoint you sometimes but god will never disappoint you okay and when i say god i don't mean you know like uh, you pray to god and you get everything that you pray you know that is not a barometer you know <coughs> but when you try to do spiritual practices you uh, take shelter of a guru or spiritual community and you elevate yourself then you will find uh, the right answers at the right time from the right source okay so all the best pisces uh, mean rashi pisces lagna focus on yourself uh, reduce your expectations from other people and try to visit a holy place with your spouse okay thank you very much all the best